wild time. All right, before we go, I want yep. to talk about something. I know the Brosters have overwhelmingly said they like when we play the extinct animal game. Ooh. I want to take a deeper dive, not too deep, just a little bit, on an animal that you and I talked about a couple times. We, tr- we thought about it. We kept thinking, would it be a good extinct or alive episode? Mm-hmm. And I know that you wouldn't have talked about it that much if you didn't think there was any relevance to it. Let's talk about Stellar Sea Cow. Sure. This is fun for me. I love this one. Um, so Stellar Sea Cow. Pat, uh, Peter, let me pitch you. Let me pitch yeah. you, okay? You're, you're, you're a network exec in Animal Planet, okay? <laughs> and I come in and I go, Peter, Patrick and I have the next episode. It's a fantastic episode. It's the Stellar's Sea Cow. Oof, sounds boring. Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty, very good. Um, uh, <laughs> the stellar sea cow was a manatee-like animal, right? This giant sea cow, except it was much larger than modern-day manatees. It grew up to 1,000 pounds, if I'm not mistaken, and grew 16 feet long, and it lived in the Bering Sea, okay, up in the, up in the Aleutian Islands of Alaska going into Russia in the Bering Sea. Now, the stellar sea cow was hunted to extinction a long time ago, but here's the but, here's the kicker, okay? The range in which, and I believe Captain Cook actually killed one of the last ones, but okay. the, the wow. range in which the stellar sea cow used to exist within the, the Bering Sea around these islands was very, very small. It was this tiny little range around like several, like let's call it a dozen islands, and I'm fudging this because it's been years since I've really looked into it, but um, you know, let's call it a dozen islands. Of those do- a dozen islands, there is like one island where there is a populace of people. And that populace is 600 people. Well, here's where the story gets interesting, okay? This is, there's 600 Russian people living on this island in the middle of the Bering Sea that are very, very rarely like, you know, going to and from the mainland. Of those 600 people, something like 30% of them believe that they have seen a stellar sea cow out fishing. So something like a third of the population that lives in this population of 600 people in the middle of bumfuck nowhere where nobody goes thinks that they've seen a giant sea mammal manatee creature and nobody's gone and like looked since like the, the 1800s. Well, and here's, I love let me it. just correct one You're thing for us. Me. It's, it's yeah. much, much bigger than, than you said. So 25 to 30 feet in length. There you go. Yep. And over 8,000 pounds. So it is much bigger. massive. Wow. Much yeah, bigger than I said. Huge. Yeah, no, I mean, it's huge. Way it's way bigger than huge. a manatee. Yeah. yeah. A couple other little things. Uh, the Stellar's sea cow, its intestinal tract, if un- unreeled, it was 500 feet long. Wow. Wow. And uh, its pe- the male's penis was two and a half feet long. I didn't Very know nice. either of those facts. It's a large animal. <laughs> Very large right. animal. So, so it could be alive, you think, for us, just because of how hard it would be to find, how remote, how few there would be, could be alive. I think it's a stretch, but yes. I think of all the giant megafauna that's gone extinct, this is the one that is the most likely to still be there. How are we going to search for it? What's the plan? Well, and, and Money's no th- issue, by the way, because the budget just got up to $2 million an episode. So mm. what do you want to do? Yeah. yeah, that's a, wow. Network yeah. TV coming back. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, okay, so first of all, that was the, that's the issue. So most of this area is, is Arc- it's, it's up near the Arctic Circle. The water is pretty dirty, right? It's not like crystal clear Bahamas water, so you don't just go on your fun little free dive with Johnny Harrington and go, well, there it is. Um, so how do you search for it? And that's the thing. So I think the way that you'd have, I think, oh, man, money's no option. Okay, I think a submarine would be great. Big dome submarine there. You could spend extended periods of time underwater with lights, which is going to do better than diving Mm -hmm. um, for visibility and range uh, and go deeper, which a lot and a lot of people don't know this, but many of the Arctic sea mammals go very deep to hunt and forage and rest, Um, you know, walruses and things or no, not walrus, um, uh, elephant seal will go up to the surface, fall asleep and drift to down to 4,000 feet before they wake up and swim up again. And that's wow. how they sleep at night. Wow. Um, and, a lot, and a lot of big, big sea mammals do this kind of thing. So deep water, I go submarine, I do a bunch of like net trapping and then a bunch of, um, uh, a bunch of like sonar work, right? To look for a really large uh, cetacean and jump in. And the thing about manatees and, and all of these types of animals, they're very slow, right? So if you got a blip on a radar, it's not like getting an orca and being like, oh, it's gone. 
like you if you got a blip you'd probably be able to jump in the water or launch your sub and go and go and investigate it nice how much how much would a sub excursion cost do you think or to to get well, a I, sub i can answer that question in detail because i pitched a shark week with it <laughs> earlier or late nice. last year that did not i'm curious uh, yeah. so it, it depends first of all the biggest cost factors are you have to have a boat that's capable of launching a sub, okay? okay? So usually that means a boat that's over 100 feet and has a crane arm that can launch the sub. Then okay. you have to have a pilot for that sub because it's not like you or I can be like, oh, it's like a go-kart, right? You, <laughs> right. Have, to have, a, you have to have a pilot for that sub. <laughs> right. Um, and all those things considered, it's actually more reasonable than you think. Just for the sub part of it, it comes out to around eight grand a day. Um, okay. Which is not that bad, but then you have to factor in, you've got this 100-foot yacht that has a captain and crew. The yacht has to get to wherever you want it, right? So in right. my case, I wanted this yacht to go to Colombia, and it had to come all the way from North America, or from the United States, rather. And like just to travel there was over 100 grand, right? Because wow. it cost them yeah. you know, X number in fuel and X number of days, and you had to pay the crew and blah, blah, blah. And then you get on the boat. Right, and then go to where you want to go and launch the sub. So it doesn't sound bad, but it starts to really add up when you sort it's of really factor getting in all the, the sub logistics. there. It's getting yeah. the sub to where you want it. Exactly. Right. Yeah, it's and especially going to where the Stellar Sea Cow is. I mean, there can't be any sub, any of those kind of boats anywhere near. You know, they're all in like Florida for like billionaires to play with. Wild time. So if you want more behind the scenes stuff, stuff that we cannot show on YouTube, Darwin Awards, video breakdowns and reviews, check out the Patreon. It's full of hours and hours of incredible exclusive content, stuff that you guys are going to love. Swipe up, click the link, do the thing, come and hang out on Patreon. See you guys there.